All right, so good to have you here again in our next lesson. Uh, we're talking about imputation and the law. And so we're going to pick up uh, at our last verse of Scripture, Galatians 3, 22 through 23. Paul says here, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. You remember Hebrews 11, we talked about how that, that it's the faith chapter. They had faith, but they didn't have the promise. We have the promise. Remember, James said, you know, Paul talked about faith without works. But Paul said that our works makes our faith perfect. You remember the woman who was taken in adultery and the people wanted to stone her. Jesus told them, he's, he says, he that is without sin cast the first stone. <clears throat> Jesus was not talking about a pacific sin that they had committed. When the woman had committed adultery and they were ready to stone her, Jesus was appealing to their conscience. Remember we talked about the consciousness of sin. That which the law could not satisfy. The law could not satisfy the consciousness of sin. So Jesus said, you without sin, cast the first stone. And if you remember, they, they couldn't do it because of guilt. Jesus Christ satisfied what the law could not. Jesus Christ satisfied the debt for sin by the sacrifice of himself. So being then made free from sin. See, now we have been made free. Rom Romans, Paul says here in chapter 6, verse 17 through 18. <clears throat> but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness, Paul said. <clears throat> you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. He's not talking about just any kind of doctrine. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about that specific doctrine. Not any doctrine. He's talking about that doctrine of the apostles. The apostles doctrine. We're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That's the foundation that we're built upon, the Bible says. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So Paul is pointing out a specific doctrine. He says, he says, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, <clears throat> that form of doctrine. So now you've made free from sin, being made free from sin. Now you're free from sin so that you can be servants of righteousness. Because we're not under the law, but we're under grace. We're under his divine influence. 
We have the Word of God. So now that we have the Word of God, we can, we can get closer to God. We can know more about Him. Remember, Jesus said, learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Learn of me. So he's talking about the doctrine, that form of doctrine, that doctrine that the apostles taught, the foundation of the apostles and prophets. When we obey that doctrine, we repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And he takes our sins away while imputing his righteousness to us. This is how we're made free. This is how we're made free. This is what makes us free from sin. You know, we talked in our other lesson about true Christ Christianity versus false Christianity. True Christianity always produces holiness. Paul said in Romans 6 and 22, he said, But now being made free from sin, we become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness in the end after everlasting life. When you stop trying to keep the rules and focus on trying to be like him. See, that's what the New Testament is all about. You can't keep all the rules. There's too many. And they're too hard. <clears throat> But guess what? If you turn your eyes on to Jesus Christ and His wonderful face, the things of this world will grow strangely dim. Be ye holy, for He is holy. People are left with the assumption that it's too hard to live for God. In fact, I've heard people say, I, I just can't live it. People come to that conclusion after working to righteousness. I remember a preacher one time back years ago. I attended this church for about eight years. Roughly eight years I went to this church. Very legalistic. It was called a holiness church. The preacher would sing a song. In fact, the preacher, the woman preacher, it was a, it was a woman preacher and her husband. They were, a, they were both supposed to be preachers. Pastors. And they also wrote songs and sang. And I remember a song that they sang. And it was called, I'll Take the Road I Know. The words go, Jesus is the way to God. There is no other road. But one of the verses, it says, holiness is the way to God. There is no other way. Another word, you get holy to get God. You remember we talked about that. Holiness is the way to God. You see, this was the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. You remember Jesus said, Beware of the leaven. We do not get holy to get God. We get God and He makes us holy. This is what the New Testament's all about. 
God imputes His righteousness in you, which saves you. And then gives you room to grow into holiness. Then holiness comes. If you serve the Lord according to the Bible, it's easy. That's right. What was it Jesus said in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30? Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You know, that's the key right there. And that's learning about him. We get that in spending time in our word, in, our, in the Bible. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Take my yoke, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Living for God is easy. You know what's hard? What's hard is being on drugs and trying to get the money when you can't keep a job. You can't hold a job down because you're strung out. And you wind up in jail. And then you can't get to work. That's, that's hard. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. But the Bible says... Jesus Christ will give you rest if you know there's always an if isn't there if you will learn of me wow righteousness without trying isn't that something you believe a person can be righteous without trying Wow, I hope you're reading this with me so you won't think I'm making this stuff up. <laughs> I hope you're following along in the scriptures. I hope you're just not listening to me. I hope you're reading with me. L listen to what Paul says here <clears throat> in Romans 9, 30 through 31. He says, what shall we say then? <clears throat> That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained righteousness. Even the righteousness which is of faith. They wasn't even following after righteousness. The Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. And then he says in verse 31, but Israel which followed after the law of, uh, the law of righteousness... See, they were working. They were working to righteousness. They didn't believe unto righteousness as the scripture says in the new will of God, in the New Testament. They were working. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Paul said the Gentiles... The Gentiles followed not. They didn't follow after it, righteousness. But they attained it. They got it anyways. Isn't that, isn't that something? The Gentiles got righteousness. And they wasn't even chasing after it. But Israel, which followed after the law... hath not attained to the law of righteousness. The Gentiles got righteousness without even trying, while the Jews tried to attain righteousness and could not attain it. That just don't seem right, does it? One guy tries and does not get it. One man works and prays and seeks and does all these things. Man, he just... He just bows his head like a bulrush. He's working hard to get righteousness. 
And this other guy, he don't even try and he gets it. <laughs> wow. Doesn't seem fair, does it? Here the Jews would bow down their heads like a bulrush and pray and fast and grind day after day. Remember the scribe and the Pharisees? I pray twice a week. I do this. I do that. They grind. Trying to be righteous. And never attain it. They never did. Why? Why? The answer is found in verse in, in Romans 9 and 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as, as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Jesus Christ is the rock. Jesus Christ is the stone. The Bible says we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He's the one that makes us righteous. He's the one that makes us acceptable. He makes us that way. He imputes his righteousness into us. He makes us perfect. He perfected us forever, the Bible says. But people stumble. The reason why that this group that worked hard, that bowed their head like a bulrush, that worked so hard to be saved, they did not seek the righteousness by faith, but went about trying to establish their own righteousness. They kept stumbling at the stumbling stone. The Jews got so angry when they picked corn on the Sabbath day. Jesus was picking corn, disciples. And they really got angry when Jesus told the man, take up his bed and walk on the Sabbath day. They stumbled at the stumbling stone. In their minds, we have got to attain. We have got to attain righteousness to get to heaven. We have to keep the rules or we won't make it in. We've got to be holy to get God. Stop thinking like that. We've got to get God to be holy. We need him to put his righteousness into us so we can begin to grow in holiness. Salvation is a free gift. Anyone who wants to be saved can be saved. The Bible lets us know that. The Bible refers to Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. They just continue rejecting him. Man, he's, he's here ready to robe them in righteousness. The Bible says that many that's baptized into Jesus Christ are put on Christ. He's there, ready. But the builders rejected. When we take his imputed righteousness out of the equation and replace it with our own, we take away the blood that justifies or acquits us. That's what we do. The chief cornerstone is figurative to everything that enables our salvation. But yet, most builders reject the stone when building their spiritual house. The plans... The plans for our spiritual house 
is the word of God. All God asks is your best, and he'll do the rest. Kind of rhymes, don't it? All God asks is your best, and he'll do the rest. Bible talks about some that have a zeal, but they don't have any knowledge. The Bible says people are destroyed. You remember that verse of scripture? The Bible says people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Romans 10, 1 through 2. Again, Paul speaking. Paul says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. But I bear them record that they've got a zeal. They have a zeal. But he says it's not according to knowledge. Many have a zeal to live for God, but without knowledge. They're really trying, but they don't know what they're doing. Here's how you can tell if you're doing that or not. You know how you can tell? You can tell if you think it's hard to serve God. It's because you have a zeal to live for God, but not according to knowledge. You have to keep searching the Word of God until you get these concepts in you. It's all over the Bible. I mean, I find, I find these concepts of imputation of God's righteousness and perfecting and, and, and at the same time not imputing our sins. I find these concepts all throughout the Bible. Let's talk for a moment about righteousness versus... Let's talk about God's righteousness versus our righteousness. Romans 10 and 3, Paul said, For they, he's talking about the Jews, For they, the Jews, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They tried to establish their own righteousness. But the Bible tells us you get righteousness by submission. The Jews, rather than having faith in and submitting to the imputation of God's righteousness, they went about establishing their own righteousness. They wanted to come up with their own brand. But like I said, you get God first by obedience to the gospel. You do your best and God will do the rest. That's the short version. So what about willful sin? Paul said... In Romans 10 and 25 through 26, he says, Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves in the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. He said in verse 26, he says, For if, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. When we sin willfully, the sacrifice stops. Remember the continual, the continual, the continual cleansing that we talked about. 
The blood continually cleanses, but if we sin willfully, the process stops. You know, some people say, I'll sin, and then I'll repent later. That's willful sin. You do your best, and sure, God will forgive you. But you should never want to do that on purpose. You should never want to do that. Because we love God. When you come up from the altar of repentance, you choose life over death. After many years of searching the scriptures, I've came to the conclusion that it's not as easy to lose your salvation as people have painted it. I've learned, I've learned that. But there, but there are all, always those people that have perverted it. There's always those people that have perverted the teaching of grace. In fact, in fact, Jude talked about that. In fact, in Revelations, the Bible talked about the deeds of the Nicolaitans. The Bible said he hated that. I'm going to give you a, a little glimpse of the problem with the, with the Nicolaitan church. In Jude 1 and 4, the Bible says, and there are... He warned us, he said, and there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old or ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we've got a lot of people preaching grace these days. They're disobeying God. And doing lots of things that the Bible tells them not to do. But they say this is all grace. No, they're calling it grace. But really it's lasciviousness. They are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. You know, grace is not a license to sin. But it is a cure. His influence upon our heart, getting close to His Word, and, 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 and walking in the light that God gives us, it's a cure. Galatians 2.17 says, But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we, are also, we, all, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So if we, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we're seeking to be justified by Him. But we're found sinners. In other words, we're, we're, just, we're just sinning because we feel like that we're justified by Christ. Is God the minister of sin? God forbid. No. You say I'm under grace, so I'll do what I want to do? No, that's not what the Bible's, the Bible's not giving us that permission. We don't have a license to sin. But the message of grace can change you and get you back on track. If we say that I'm justified by Christ, I don't keep the rules and yet we are found sinners. Is Christ making us sin? Is he the minister of sin? God forbid, Paul said. So there is willful sin and there is unwillful sin. The Bible makes this distinction between the two. But you know what? Thank God that when we walk in the light, as He is in the light, thank God that when we do all that we can 
and we're really sincere in our walk with God and we put our faith in God. Thank God that He gives us the strength to go forward. I thank God that He puts His righteousness in us and that He, and that he refuses to, put, to impute sin in those who are willing to live for Him and serve Him. I thank God for that. Well, this concludes our lesson of imputation and the law. And so we're going to start working toward our next lesson. And uh, I'm not exactly sure at this time what that's going to be. Uh, we have a little upgrading and some think work that we've got to do to uh, make a few changes. We, you know, we have a studio that I built and uh, and so there's things that we need to do in the studio and uh, so once we get some of this stuff taken care of we're going to come back and we're going to pick up in a new lesson and uh, there's been a lot of requests I've had people that's requested that we, you know, there, I have people that ask me questions and they, and they, they would like to know about various things. And so we're going to, we're going to go there. Uh, we're going to be talking about some things. Uh, one person asked the question about the Bible and speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, so we just got a lot of directions. We're going to be going into eschatology uh, very soon and, uh, and, and there's going to be a lots of work in that area um, I have spent lots of time in that I've probably spent more time in that than anything else uh, but anyways we're going we're gonna to be doing these things but anyways I appreciate you listening and uh, I will see you in that next lesson